Good morning, good morning. How is everybody? Uh, I've just got a message here. Let me just take care of that. Miss Dali is messaging me this morning. Um, how is everybody doing? Let me just bring this up on Facebook uh, on my laptop. Um, just give me one second. Oopsie daisy. lost where I'm going with this today it's one of those days you know I know it's kind of my last Facebook live of the year you know it's just one of those days where you just kind of not taking it slow but just kind of like okay uh, let me share this um, okay so Boy, that background looks a bit gringy for my little, um, let me see if I do this, if he looks a little bit brighter. Talking to myself today, I've spent the, um, doesn't make much of a difference, I've spent the weekend doing workshops. Pretty much um, Saturday was taken up with workshops and then, of course, um, Sunday. Um, let me see, I'm touching things. See, I told you, I'm just kind of all over the shop. So, um, good morning, Charlie. Good morning, Debbie. Uh, hello, everybody else who is there. So, <laughs> you know, like I said, I'm coming kind of to the end of this year and I was just like, hmm, what do I want to do? let's not make it so serious let's let's have a little bit of fun so today i'm going to do the evolution of my reindeer um i loved creating him he's 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 he has been a lot of fun because he actually went through quite a lot of um changes if you will um much like darwin's theory of how we came about but this was pip's theory of how the reindeer came about and um, so I'm going to take him through my um, <laughs> process of my evolution. Hi, Jill. Hi, Gloria. Hi, James. I wonder if you're watching today and you're not on the naughty stool. I hope you're being a good boy for grandma. And um, so, yeah, so I'll tell you where it started from. Um, my little evolution of my reindeer was I had, for those of you who are in Canada, you know Dollarama. So I went was in Dollarama, always looking for my little cake board plates for my projects. And uh, who could not help but go to the Christmas section of Dollarama? And I'm one of those people, if somebody gives me something, hi Judy, if somebody gives me something, hi Jill, um, if something if somebody gives me something or says, here, have this, I will take it and I will work it into a project and that's how I push myself uh, when it comes to how I think or my thought process in creating I don't always go and pick things because I always like them and I know what I want to do because I think I would become stagnant then and I wouldn't grow as an artist so when people say to me look I've got this die cut what can you do with it I love it same sometimes when I go out, I will really try and think outside the box and say to myself, okay, give yourself a challenge to see what you can do. Don't go for all the nice canvases and don't go for this and the rice papers, this and that. Let's see what you can do. So this was kind of a challenge and because I thought they were so cute. So this is called the Googly Deer Garland. Hi, Tara. It's called the Googly Deer Garland and it's a dollar twenty-five from our regular Dollarama stores. It's six pieces and you have these six reindeers that come in it. So everybody has pretty much access to these in Canada. You could even get these done at Hobby Licious in the UK, I'm sure. So they're just really thick cardboard um, reindeers. So I saw these. I had no idea what I was going to do with them. Albeit I saw a friend working with them and she had made lots too. Um, and then painted them brown. And they also come with the gold strings for the tag there. 
Hi Dally, in case you missed it, I'm gonna do the evolution of my reindeer. <laughs> I'm doing Pip's theory on evolution. Um, they came with this and then they also came with their red noses and these googly eyes. So I saw these and the first thing I think is, okay, I like the reindeer, I'm not sh too sure about this stuff, but it's gonna be fun to see what I can come up with. Because if anybody remembers, I did a very whimsical canvas last Christmas that went over really well. So I brought them home and they sat with me. They've been with me for about a month, I'll be honest. I didn't do anything with them. And then I was thinking of this week's Facebook, um, live and i thought you know what pull out those reindeers and throw as many products as you can on this poor little reindeer to just alter him completely from this to this so he's so cute he's so so cute so he went through a bit of an evolution because every step that i altered him i actually loved him i fell in love with him um but of course I couldn't stop, so I kept going. So the first step that we're gonna do is, and this is, was the first step where I actually loved him. And along the way, I even was using these because I loved the little googly eyes that came with him and everything. So the first thing I did was, what's the easiest way to cover anything and change it is to use rice paper. So, I'm just going to take this message off. So this is my bag of leftover rice paper. So I, I'm being very uh, transparent here. <laughs> this is my rice paper. I'm not too worried about it being all messed up because as you know, rice paper, um, you know, it, it straightens itself out. So hi, Jay Shiri. So basically all I did was I'm just going to randomly pull out, I'll just pull out the first few that I can see, pull out some rice papers because it's not really going to matter um, what kind of rice papers you use. So I'm going to look at that, look how easy is that, just randomly pull out some rice papers from your bag. Okay, here we go little reindeer, we're going to start off nice and white and we're going to have you completely changed by the time we're done. And I think it's such a cute, fun little project. You can do this with the kids. So I'm not gonna even go through all the products like I do in the beginning. We're gonna go straight at it. I'm gonna talk about the products as we go through them. So the very first thing that you want to do is get your Pentart decoupage varnish and glue um, matte medium, okay? And I forgot my scissors, I'm gonna go grab them. Okay, got my scissor. So we're gonna take the map medium. We're not gonna overthink this. This is gonna be my thing going into next year, not to overthink things. So let's just come in and let's just put some of the decoupage down on our little reindeer. Now, you could paint the back of the reindeer too, um, or put rice paper on it too. So, you know, you could actually join the two reindeers like this, and then you would have a mixed media style on both sides if you hung it on the tree. Hi, Terry. So you could do that. Terry, today we're doing the evolution of a reindeer, according to Pip's theory. So just go in and... Oh boy, this is already drying. I haven't even got my rice paper on it. So I better put some rice paper down before I keep going. And then just take your rice paper. Like I said, I did not overthink this. I just went and put my rice paper down. Just like so. Okay. And then what you can do is come in and you can do the other side. Now, because the reindeer is already white, I didn't really need to um, primer this at all. And then here we can, I'm just going to actually tear this so I don't have such a um, 
prominent line going around my reindeer here. So just put him down like so. I just didn't want that round line shown, but mind you, having said that, um, you're not gonna really see any of this. Okay, and then you've got your little antlers to do. And then you can bring in a piece for the antlers. Let me just, I've been rambling a lot to myself lately. So if I'm just rambling on, don't worry about it. Oopsie daisy. And we'll have to just do it at an angle so it fits nicely. Okay, so then once you've got that done, just press it into place, massage out any bubbles. Easiest way to do that is you come in over the top to protect it anyway. Okay. This, I'm actually just massaging it with my brush as I go along. Okay. Then we're just going to come in and give that a nice dry. I know Tara so this is the beauty of it like you know look at things uh, and see what you can do with them so what I'm going to do now is I'm just gonna rough not roughly but just cut around them if you get any overlapping that's fine too when I mean overlapping if it comes over the edge not to worry about it we're gonna be covering that anyway You can do also do this with an exacto knife, that's fine too. Exacto knife would probably be a lot easier. Or you fussy cutters are probably looking at me saying, oh my goodness, is this how she fussy cuts? But like I always say at home, take your time, don't go as fast as I'm going. So this reindeer has so much stuff on the poor guy. His mom, I wouldn't even recognize him. I didn't recognize him by the time I was done with him. So yeah, you not don't worry about getting into every nook and cranny. Because what we're going to be doing, because this is cardboard, we're going to be sealing all this. And at that same time, we can take any extra paper we've kind of got around the reindeer and wrap it around. And it all it does, when you do have a little bit of this paper, I know I don't have it everywhere, it will create further texture on his um, outside rim right here. Okay, let's move this out of the way. So let's just go back to our 
3D varnish and I just wanted to protect the back in case I did want to do anything on him. Um, I wanted to protect it because it is just like that very, I mean it's a dollar store item, right? So it's not like that chipboard or anything that you see. It's just cardboard. So I didn't want anything penetrating this and making it bubbly. And this is where then you can come in and you can really clean up those edges like this. Okay, and just bring them around the sides. Seal it up good and proper. Give it a helping hand. So I'm just protecting it at the sides while I'm doing this also. Nice if you got tiny little fingers. I just love my reindeer. Okay, so once we've done that, let's just give this a quick dry. It's snowing here today, snowing, snowing, snowing. Hi Paul, that's okay if you're a little bit late. We're taking a little white reindeer and doing an evolution on him. Okay, so this was my first, um, I'm gonna turn him around. So when I had done this, this is where I decided, oh my goodness, how cute is he? Oh, look at him, isn't he absolutely adorable? So we went from a plain Jane white piece to this so isn't that just amazing that is just um rice paper that's all we did was put some rice paper on him and i think he looks absolutely fab now you could continue so initially this was reindeer number one this is how i liked him i thought this is just great but then i couldn't stop so reindeer one had to go and reindeer two had to emerge and it's so sad um but hey, you could do a reindeer garland going through his evolution, eventually getting to this, yeah? Okay, let's just get rid of this extra rice paper here. So the next step that I did was I wanted to give him some texture. And unfortunately, you can't always see on camera um, all the texture, but he has so much texture on him, like lots and lots of texture. So the next step that I did was pulled off his googly eyes and pulled off his nose without hurting him. And I got transparent crackling gel one. Yeah, he's so cute, isn't he, Jill? I just love him. Um, we got crackling gel transparent one, and then we got two. So what we're going to do is we're going to first come in with the primer. This was just to get get some texture going for him. That was my goal here. I'm just going to pull that decoupage brush out the water and dry it. Um, so just come in and find a nicer brush here to use. And you want to come in with component number one. Now, all crackle paste dries better when you let it um, 
it it work it seems to take better when you let it dry on its own but we don't have that liberty today so we're gonna try and dry it on camera we actually did this saturday at the workshop too and it worked that day so we'll see i always have a hit and miss with this one so just come in with your primer you probably don't have to go that thick with this primer Make sure you get the edges because you want that's where you want most of your little crackle texture to whoopsie daisy to hopefully show up. So there's so many different rice papers. Um, this is just like I said, I'm just pulling out of my stash. I'm not worried. I think any rice paper would work and you can just change up the um, alteration of it with the embellishments in any color that you want. So there we have him. He looks a little bit milky, but that's because we need for this to dry. And if you're not covering your whole reindeer with the transparent crackle gel, it don't worry too much if you only want to do the antlers or around his ears. It's not really going to matter. You'll know where you put it down because it dries shiny. So you never have to worry about not knowing where you've put anything. Okay, so let's dry that. Don't get too close at this point, but let's dry this. Okay, it's on really thick. Uh, it doesn't have to go on that thick. I'm just gonna. Oh, I'll let me do this off camera so I don't make you all dizzy. I'm just um, letting it cool off. So a little bit of shaky, 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 shaky over here. I just want it to. I don't know if it would make a difference if I put this on while it's hot, but I don't want to take the risk. Okay. So next step that you're going to do is you're going to come in with component number two. Again, it's better off if you let this dry on its own. So I can't, don't know how this is going to pan out. It worked out on the weekend. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave extra chunks around this area because in this area, I want more texture. Okay, so in this area, hi Peggy, in this area, I want more texture. So we're just gonna do them around here, okay? So it's just the back of it, this is the front. So you would have covered the reindeer where um, the white is, so that way you don't have to put primer down. Don't put the rice paper on the back of it. Okay, so here goes. That is number two. And I'm just gonna 
brush it on if you were to use a palette knife then you would get obviously bigger cracks more random cracks and see how around the edges i'm gonna just um, leave some excess off because i just want more texture there so i'm just doing it like this just whatever's left on my brush i'm just doing that to create more texture come down the ears here on the antlers and again just leave extra bits of the crackle on the edges so that you get more texture okay because even though you can't really tell how much texture i've got um close up or in person you can see i've got extra texture around the ears and the antlers so just a little bit more here and just wipe off what's on your brush that's all you need to do so that there we go you just have a little bit more going on i'm just going to bring some down this side here and this side and maybe a little bit more around his ear here and a little bit more just around the bottom okay and then we are going to go and we are going to dry this maybe we'll give him just a little bit extra coming around here Okay, there we have it. Wash this brush. Hi Susan, how are you? Oh yes, Gloria, they've got lots of these. Um, well, when I went, they had a lot. Obviously, I only brought one packet um, because it comes with um, six in it already. So I only brought the one. But yeah for all of you here in canada this is what the packet looks like it's a googly deer garland comes with these the nose and the googly eyes and it's a dollar 25 for six pieces so you get quite a few um things in there great project to do with the kids too okay let's try this While I dry this, I'm actually going to try and multitask. I'll see how that goes. Um, while I'm drying this, I am going to show you the products that I'm going to be using. Okay? That kind of kills two birds with one stone.
<laughs> I managed it. I'm a little bit ambidextric, to be honest. So it's usually not too hard for me to do things with my left and right hands at the same time. Or at least I like to think it's not too hard. Okay, let's see if any of that stuff is dry. That's a lot of products, isn't it? Lots of products to create that reindeer. I told you, you went through a whole evolution. Um, but doesn't mean we're going to use all of them, yeah? So he's still a little bit wet. But you see, because we took the heat gun to him, so he's got those little chunky bits at the end of his little, um, I was going to call them antennas, his antlers. So next thing that you want to do is, is that you want to have a baby wipe handy. And what you're going to do is first, you are going to come in and take a little bit of your ebony lazor and you're just going to give him a little bit of a dusting around his outside just right here like this we're gonna this is his first layer of grunging him up okay i'm just gonna keep going around This all adds to the final look. If you can see, it's starting to creep down. I don't know if you can see it. It's starting to, the black's starting to creep down the cracks. So I'm just taking it directly onto the brush, not taking too much time here. This little antler isn't exactly round. There. So just a rough, quick dusting. So now he's got a darker edge all the way around. Just bring some of this down so it goes into some of those lovely chunky cracks that you have. And then now look, so look at all the definition he has now, just by using a couple of drops of um, that Lazor. So he was quite cool here too. I didn't mind him at this stage either. Um, you can see how gorgeous it's all starting to crackle down on this end. Okay, so after that bit was done, this is where you want your, um, this isn't too wet, so I'm just gonna go straight ahead. Take your brown wax and um, just start massaging it in to your um, reindeer here. I'm in love with this brown wax. You can just about vintage anything. Now, if you want to keep him lighter, you can. Don't go in so heavy with the wax. We're going to be pulling it back anyway. But if you wanted to keep that gorgeous blue hue that I love about him, you could do that too. And I'll see if you can see the cracks now. You can see the cracks where it's going to be slightly darker. So can you see the cracks now where they've all formed right here? He's all crackled up. He's gone crackers on us. You can see the little baby cracks up here. Do you see those? Where you put a little bit of extra down. Okay. So just beautiful, this crackle. So now what you want to do is you just want to come in with your baby wipe and you want to just pull back a little bit in certain areas. And like I said, this will now reveal even more cracks under this okay because what you've done is you've pushed that brown um, wax paste right into not wax paste it's finishing wax right into the cracks and i'll give you a close-up here so now he's looking really vintage but can you see now all the cracks the random cracks that you have everywhere um can you, sorry, I've got a message pop up on my phone. I can't see what I'm doing here. <laughs> um, can you see all the little cracks? They're just absolutely gorgeous. So what happens is when you put the brown wax in, 
it starts picking up all the little cracks that you can see over this rice paper. You can even see the little veins going up here, very tiny veins, okay? And then down here, you've got nice chunky cracks. Good morning, Danica. And then you can just keep going and the more you rub it back, the more obviously um, it's gonna go back to its original color. But I cannot tell you how gorgeous all that crackling is there. And this is, thank you, Debbie. And this is such, um, given it such depth. I mean, look how tiny these cracks are where I went really thin. So it all gives it great depth. So that's your next step. Now, you could keep him darker, you can make him lighter. Like I said, you can pull back with this. Um, again, this is all about creating texture. So this, this Facebook Live is, you can do this on any surface. Next, I'm going to take the Earth Brown paint. Now I'm going to enhance them even a little bit more. So I'm just gonna actually just take my Lazor brush here and we are just going to take a little bit here. I'm just gonna tap it off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce the brown into the outside a little bit more, okay? This is just to give it a little bit more of a matte look because we're on a shiny surface. And also because I want it to kind of go over the sides here. Okay, and pull it in just a little bit. Now you could left it like that and just kept on doing it with your wax paste too. But I just want to show you if you don't have some stuff that you can actually pull it off with um, other stuff that you might have in your stash. But this is to further just enhance him around our edges. So we want to give him some definition. And don't worry, because you're on the crackling page, you can pull back on this if you want to. So now he's become a very dark reindeer. He's like me, he's a middle child. He's gonna be the black sheep of the reindeer family that I'm creating. Okay, so now he's really becoming very uh, mixed media style, okay? So once we've done that, and we can come back and introduce this brown again, you can keep doing this as you go along, okay? I'm just gonna pat him dry. Now, if you don't like how dark he is, here you go, I'll show you, it's very easy. You can just start coming in and pulling back the color, just like this, okay? Just start pulling it back. So I like him at this stage, to be honest. Um, he's gonna be a little bit darker than my original. Um, that's it. So we're done with the earth brown. Now, the next thing you want to do, I'm just going to give it a quick dry, even though it is kind of dry. Okay, so now we're going to give it a little bit more texture. So we don't, I don't want him super 3D because he's quite small and he's quite delicate. So I'm just going to use a light modeling paste. So yummy. And I'm just going to, I know a lot of you all did the KSG 409 stencil with the music. Um, also have this one, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's also got music on it, but it's got this gorgeous ballerina on it. So. It's actually really, really pretty. As you can see, the stencil has been well used. And then what you want to do is you don't have to cover all of him. You can just do little areas of him. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Just do little areas. This stencil's been used so much, not even funny. So just going to take, oopsie daisy, a little bit and just do them in um, some random, oopsie daisy, now I've smudged it. So if you come in and you've smudged it, don't worry about it, because you're on that crackling paste and it's slick, just come in and take it off. That's a, 
the good news about when you're using a product that's glossy is that you can take it right off and not worry about it. So let's try that again. Let's go to a different area of this stencil. Let's just start here, shall we? It's my stencil is so used and abused, I think. It's lost its power. It's lost its magic. But I wanted to use a music one. So just go in certain areas. You don't want to cover your whole reindeer, okay? Just certain areas of it. And then I've just got to get this little antler here. Trying to do this without disrupting the other side too much. Okay, so there you go. It's so very forgiving when you work with anything um, that has a slick surface. Um, now, it wouldn't be forgiving had you done it on the regular crackle. It has to be almost either a solvent based or it has to be like a shinier crackle. It wouldn't work on the regular Penta um, crackling paint system crackles and nor would it on um, the black or white crackle. So just keep that in mind. Um, there are ways to clean it up after you goof up like me. Not that you guys goof up. he's looking awfully cute at this stage i don't think at this stage i was checking out how he looked but he looks kind of really nice he looks like a cookie with a little bit of icing on him that you could eat he actually looks kind of cute here so that could have been number two evolution number two not evolution number two the next stage in his evolution so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in with the walnut lazor and oopsie daisy i have a pot of water one is for dark and one is for light and i just put my dark and my light so that's okay so now i'm just going to give darken them up a little bit this um modeling paste is just mainly for a little bit of texture nothing um else it's just for my texture It's not quite dry, as you can see. Bad, bad child. So now we are done with our, that lizard for now. I'm going to dry this, make sure it is dry. Okay, so we're going to put him aside now. So this is what he looks like now. Uh, thanks, Dali. Uh, this is what he looks like right now. Hi, Pat. Um, and there was somebody else's name that popped up. I can't see it now. Um, this is what he looks like. He's looking mighty cute. He's gone from this to this. Let's put him aside. And the next thing you want to do is you want to collect some of your embellishments so we're just gonna I don't know what I want to do with him yet but I'm just gonna pull out some of my um, 
embellishments here. So you can do anything on him. It doesn't really matter. You could even keep him silver if you really wanted to. Mm. Going through, what do I have here? Now, I stuck mine down with heavy body gel, but because um, it's a Facebook Live and we want don't want to keep all of you like super long, I'm going to use my 3D varnish. So really, then it's about placement. On that one, I don't know if I'm quite happy with my placement because it looks a little bit mm, shelved, if you will. But then that's what makes him kind of um, whimsical and kind of all over the place, I guess. I had like smaller little flowers. I don't know how much smaller I can get. Oh, look, butterflies too. I don't know if the reindeer would suit a butterfly. No, I'm talking to myself. Don't worry about me. I've lost my marbles. I do kind of like it going up a little bit because I think I just want to have it kind of offset. Let's see what else do I have here. Um, got a leafy one. It's kind of leafy here. It's really that, I mean, there's no right or wrong way of um, doing this. I've got like a chalk full of um, embellishments here. But let me see if I went down that way and then I kind of came off his face. Maybe that would work. Maybe I don't need so much stuff. You guys having, having a laugh watching me struggle how to do my little reindeer here. I don't like it like that though because it's just not got enough going on. Okay, you know what's going to happen. I'm going to have to take these off. Then I'm going to come back and I won't know what I did. Okay, I'm kind of liking him. I'm kind of, I'm okay with him. I can handle him right now. Um, There's my little stash of pent-up embellishments um, for my little baby flowers. Okay, so next step that you want to do is bring out your black primer. Oh boy, I'm gonna forget how I how I did this placement. That's gonna be hilarious. Okay, well that's what happens. My camera is being used, so I can't take a picture. Um, why is this brush so hard? Okay, so we're just gonna pull out a brush here, and we are going to primer everything black. I'm gonna do everything black because I really want it to. Oh, I've got a new pot of black primer. I've got to take that top off. So we're going to get messy here now. We're just going to black primer everything. And the reason that we're black primer is because we need the sparkling gel to really stand out. And because the sparkling gel is translucent, it works better if you have a dark primer underneath it. Albeit, you guys have seen me use it straight on MDF and it works just fine. But these are silver. And I wanted them to be a bit prominent. You can use other embellishments. You don't have to use the flowers. It's just something that I had handy. Like I said, I brought the reindeers um, in order to push myself uh, to make something that I normally wouldn't or try to do something uh, just to get my creative juices flowing. And didn't think too much about what was going to go on it. But you could do anything. You could use more Christmas themed embellishments. It's entirely up to you. No, and the fun part. Colouring these little things. Messy, messy project. This one. Might not need all of these. Mm. 
Now the gesso will dry relatively fast so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, there we go. That's it. That's all you need to do for that part. Okay, there's a tiny little reindeer. You don't need to spend too much time on doing all these embellishments. I'm just going to wipe my hands here. Okay, I might not use the gold wax. I don't know yet. So the next thing I did was I'm just going to give this a quick dry. Be careful when you handle them if they're the metal flowers. Um, I learned that lesson. I picked up a really hot one. Okay, let me see. I must have some kind of tool here to hold these. Improvise, that's what I'm doing, improvising. Okay, so the next thing that I did was, I wasn't sure, to, to be honest with you, I decided I just wanted to play with my sparkling gel. That, that's the honest truth. I can't even say that when I did my reindeer, that that was the colors that I was going for, but I thought red is kind of Christmassy, so why not? I think I'm gonna change it up now. I'm gonna move away from the red, maybe. Oh, I'll think about it. And I'm going to try and make it more about the, the green gold sparkling gel. And I'll bet you I'm going to end up bringing that red in because it's just so pretty. And the olive gold sparkling gel. So let's start off with that. And then for the base, I'm going to use a thorn gold sparkling gel. Okay, well, let's have a little play and see what happens. That's all you can do. It's all you can do. So what I did was I just came over each one um, with the one colour that I had kind of picked. Now, you may ask, but if you're going to go over it with other colours, this is about building layers. Um, having different colours with other colours show underneath. That's all that this is about. And you can just play as much as you want once you've got them down. But if you have a look at how gorgeous that looks on that now, it's just beautiful. So just go ahead and give everything a little thin coat of your main colour. I went with the thorn gold because it's very close to the actual reindeer colours. somebody's got any suggestions an easier way to do these things let me know they're all so fiddly i'm not too worried about them because once i glue them down i'll be able to play around with them oopsie daisy did this one the wrong way uh no well, not really it depends on which way you want to look at it and i just love love that um sparkling gel i've had these pots since they came out and i've been using them ever since and I've used them in my workshops as you can see that one little brush has taken me so far I just love the sparkling jars so because I'm not sure quite sure what my placement is going to be I'm just going to give them all a little bit of dusting of all the colors I've picked until I'm ready to put it all down okay I'm not going to worry too much um, about drying these. I'm just going to go into my second colour. And that colour, actually I better give them a bit of a blast. I don't want them to get too muddy. Um, I'm going to go in with my second darkest colour, 
Albeit though, I bet you he'll just look lovely with all these golds and browns on him too. They go really, really well. He would be like a really elegant, classy kind of reindeer. But it doesn't pop enough for me. So let's move on. We're going now to the green gold. Ooh, so yummy. And all I'm doing is I'm just picking up select areas, okay? Now I've got my base color down. So all I'm doing is just finding specific areas that I just want to. I actually might just leave them in this color. Just select areas. I'll show you what that looks like. I'll bring it up close. So can you see the two colors on it? I don't know if you can. So now he's looking just lovely. I'm just gonna come in with a bit more of that blue because I actually quite like it. <laughs> Why not even use the green gold? Or was this the green gold? This was the green gold. What I mean is the olive gold. Okay, so once you've done that, if you want to, maybe I'll bring a little bit of that green gold in on it. And shut the lid here. I'm not going to dry that. I'm just going to clean my brush off so I don't contaminate my green gold here. Olive gold, olive gold. Get it right. And just, oh yes, I like this. Just bring a little bit of that in. So you've got these like really nice two-tony kind of gems and things and embellishments. Am I talking to myself again? So, and the last one I went more red. This one I've gone more greeny. We'll see where that goes, where, where that goes, because um, might not stay that way. I, I didn't use these two. They were the main ones that um, I used in this one. But now I've just realised I only have the red beads out because I didn't plan on doing this colour. So we're going to have to see what happens. Okay, so your next step then, give it a dry. Thanks, Debbie. See if I had a black piece of paper here. Of course, I don't have a black piece of paper here, but I really just wanted to show you how gorgeous these are um, against the black. So you can actually see how beautiful these three colored tones are. And of course you can tone them down as much as you want, as little as you want. Um, but now see what the sparkling gel has done. Can you see that? Isn't that a lot better to see? Hi Laurie. But now you can see all the different tones. So you've got the thorn gold, the green gold, and you've got the olive gold in there. But that gives you a better indication of, and they're so shiny, you can't really see so so shiny but that's what they actually look like okay so bringing back our little reindeer uh, hopefully this stuff will dry i'm going to now do my little placement of how i want him and i've forgotten how i did it to be honest and i knew that would happen because that's just uh me but that's okay we will play around and see what we have going on. He's very greeny today, very, very greeny. I don't want to leave any kind of gaps anywhere. I'm 
you know what's going to happen. I'm going to do a rewind and watch myself and then I'm going to realise, ooh, I actually liked it the way I had it. I remember I wanted something, a, a little bit of variation to come up the antler. I do remember that bit. I don't like that. It's too much in line. That's better. And around here, kind of. I push them jet that bit out there a little bit. And I'll bring this here. Anyway, you guys kind of get the gist of what I'm trying to do today. Okie dokie. I've got this little lonely little bead here. I don't know where he belongs. We could tuck him in down here if we wanted to, but we're not going to tuck him over here. He's not going to be a part of the equation. Okay, let's start gluing before I forget what I'm doing here. So let's start with this here. So I'm just using the 3D varnish only because I need this to dry kind of right away. Quite liking um, this greeny color on here actually. Oopsie daisy. <laughs> ever so quietly doing this and I'm getting it everywhere everywhere stay be a good reindeer stop giving mommy issues It's painful to watch, guys. <laughs> stay. I'm talking to it like it's my pet reindeer. Stay. That one just doesn't want to stay. Okay, so once you've got them down and they've actually sitting there and they've dried, this one really doesn't want to stick. I'm gonna just, maybe I should get my glue gun out. It's the only thing I have with these Facebook lives or doing workshops online is that the drying time can be a bit of a pain. Okay, so once we've got that down, now I know why I use the red, because the beads that I have are red. Um, but that's okay. He actually got to this point and then I'd given him his whimsical eye. So this was the next evolution for him. This is what he looked like. Uh, thanks, Jill. Go and cook. And oh, I have some tea. Um, but this was his next evolution. This is what he looked like before I decided to change him up again. Obviously, he was red and gold at the time. So next step that you want to do is that you want to come in and start placing some beads down. So I just came in with little bits of my 3D gel in different areas, just like this. Not 3D gel, my 3D varnish. 
Um, don't be afraid to go over your flowers, down your flowers like this. Okay. I might do some up there. Some under there. And then what I did was I just basically I'll just put them down on here. And then I just came in and threw some beads on them so that they would just stick into the little areas here. Well, that wasn't very elegant and ladylike, but that's okay. Okay, let's just use our hand because that would probably, oopsie daisy, just be just as easy. I might not introduce a red because I'm quite liking this brownie kind of greeny effect, to be honest with you. I might leave the red beads out of it. I should just tip the whole bag over this and let it be. I'm just going to tap these in a little bit, make sure they're stuck. That one's still moving. It's all, it's alive. Okay, then tap off your access which is a lot, and the flower's full enough. So this is your access now. Might even leave this flower off, it don't look too bad. Okay, maybe I better turn that glue gun on. Where is my glue gun? Let's see if we can get that one to stay down. If not, not the end of the world. Now look at this mess you've made. You've made, not me. You've made me make. Okay, there's going to be lots of beads to clear up after this class. So I'm not going to, I'm not, I've decided I don't, I don't know if I want to introduce the red into there. I'm going to leave it like that. I don't know why. I just feel like, uh... okay, so... Now let's give, show you what he looks like. So look, he's already coming along. So all these lovely scrumptious beads on him and everything. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I think he's got too much contrast. So I'm gonna come in with my brown again. And let me see if I can find the right brush here. And I'm just going to give him a little bit more um, brown here and there. He's just a little bit, I, I don't know, he looks a little bit wishy-washy to me right now. I kind of like the dark look on this one. So I'm not doing much, I'm just bringing in a little bit of brown here and there just to I just want to darken him up a little bit I don't want him so light I'm not feeling him so light okay nice night nice and grungy now okay I'm just going to give that a quick dry let's see if I can't dry that 3d gel uh, 3d varnish Okay, might not need the glue then after all that because now it's decided it wants to dry. Okay, so now we're still not getting, we're not there, but we're getting close. So this one's very green and that one's very red. So the next thing that I did was I grabbed my delicate metallic. And all we're going to do with the delicate metallic is we 
Oh, I've got to take that. So it's a gorgeous colour. We're just going to highlight some of these areas just ever so gently to make them pop. So let me see if you can see that where I've done this flower. Do you see how it's kind of got a goldy hue compared to the other ones? Like right there. Okay, so you're just going to do that to all the areas. Tap it off um, and just introduce some of that got really luscious gold. Now at this point, if you want to start bringing in other colours from your sparkling gels, you can do that again. So if I wanted to make this more bluer, then I could do that. Bring it over your beads to give them a dusting. That one's got too much on it now, but that's okay. Okay, so once you've done that, give that a bit of a dry. I'm going to come back in with my green gold and I'm going to enhance some very nice blue areas. I wish you guys could see this the texture is unbelievable because of all the different colors you've got under there okay so i'm happy with that so that was kind of his next stage of the evolution for me this is where he got to and i was still sticking this eye on him at this point i was still sticking this eye on him so he's very very green he's just absolutely stunning in my mind so the next thing that you want to do is you want to take your, and I've lost it, I've lost it, I've lost it. What do they do with it? You can take your little bit of your white acrylic paint right here. And let me grab my spray water bottle. Like I've said, I think we've got two or three of these and let's just bring him to life now oh thank you Debbie no the photo doesn't do it any justice because you just can't tell and I always find it so mis um so disheartening that my photos are not what I what it actually looks like. He is so very 3D. And then what you want to do is you also want to come in and introduce a little bit of the gold. And this one you can also um, I have to be very careful because I don't want lots of this. This one you can also do some splatters with. I can't see those, so I'm going to take a little bit more paint. And then he'll have a kind of a oopsie daisy because nice big splatters. Then he'll have kind of more of a goldy hue to him. Okay, so once you've done that, come in and dry him. He is so textured, it's not even funny.
<laughs> oh, thanks ladies, you guys are so kind. I hope I've showed you that you can just about go anywhere and get anything um, and alter it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the primer paste gesso. Uh, we're just on the last steps here. Now, as I always say to you, the thing with dry brushing, and I know I say this all the time, but it, I like saying it because it reinforces in my head. When you are dry brushing, your goal is to get the whatever paint or whatever paste you're using to travel up your brush. That's how you dry brush and you use what's traveled up your brush to continue the dry brushing. So when you put a very little bit on the front, what you want to do a little bit more than that. So when you put a little bit on the front, what you want to do is to tap really hard. And you want to tap and then what will no you'll notice is that it starts, see how it's traveled up the brush? That's what you're going for. And at that point, you can come in and now you can see how it's dry brushing. Can you see right there how that's dry brushing? And then you can see on his little antlers there. Now you can see how much definition um, there really is on this little reindeer. And then just work your way around. And see, I'm not reusing my brush or putting any more primer on it. I'm just working my way around with what has worked up my brush. Okay, and that's all you're doing. Okay, I did not have to reuse it to dry brush, but he's got this lovely dusting around him. As you can see right here, he's got this gorgeous little dusting around him, um, just from that one little brush, okay? If you want to do more, just put a little bit more on your brush tap it make sure it's traveled up and then just come in and dry brush any areas where you want further dry brushing okay so that's what he looks like now he's very 3d okay so now we've got him to that stage, you've done some dry brushing, you've given him some nice definition. Um, don't be afraid to go over some of your modeling paste light and pick up that and whiten that up a little bit. Just to keep giving him some further definition. This is really about building texture, this workshop or this Facebook Live. So much texture build up. Now, what I'm going to do so I'm going to bring the, I told you there was a lot to this project. I'm going to bring back the green gold. And what we're going to do with the green gold is, if I can find my brush now that I used. Yeah, here it is. You guys know I just use the same brushes over and over again. I'm just going to take a little bit of the green gold. I'm going to tap it off. And what I'm going to do is just introduce it into the size, just gently, just like that. Okay. Because this will then tie, see how it ties in your whole project, opposed to there being none to it being here. This is what's going to tie in your whole project towards the end. So just keep doing this all the way around. Take a put bit on your brush, brush, pull it off. And this will also, I don't know if you can see it will also give you a sparkle on the edges. But this really just gives it a really nice little um, outline that stays within the same colors of the same family, if you will. And if there's anything that you don't like, like say that went to gold, just come over it. Don't worry about it. Um, Pentart products are very forgiving in that sense that you can just go back over them again. So now can you see how you've got that beautiful blue hue that ties right into your reindeer hair? Okay. So then once you've done that, um, you can introduce this blue you could have done the brown and you can just introduce it just gently around your little reindeer 
nothing too exciting. We've already gone over it with the dark lazuli, remember? And we also have the rice paper under there giving it texture. Not too happy with that antler. It's a bit curly whirly for my liking. I'm just going to bring some of this blue down because I kind of actually like this blue on it. So then he went like this. So this is what he looks like. Can you see all that texture on it? Thank you, Gloria. And you see the blue there now. Okay, so now to finish him off, and when I finally got him to where I liked him, I still was, believe it or not, I'll be honest with you, I actually had glued this eye down on him because I thought he looked really whimsical. And I absolutely loved it I just, I just loved having his little eye like that um just because it because it was a little bit silly kind of thing it was like whimsical meets mixed media and it was again something that i had done in my mind i have become the theory on how these reindeers evolve apparently um i'm just gonna poke that through there um, so that eye was actually sitting there. It was only when I got up this morning and I looked at it and I thought, I don't know how everybody's going to react. I've got this really nice altered reindeer and he's going to have this funky little googly eye on him. So I went with the 3D pen instead. But really, um, so I pulled it off, of course. Um, but you can go googly like this. He's so cute. I just love him to bits um, like that. Or you can do what I went and did, which was I came in and used a 3D pen and um, I just gave him a nice big round eye. It's entirely up to you how you want to do this. So there he is, my little reindeer in all its glory. I could do more to it. I could probably bring in a little bit more primer paste on it i'm just going to put them on a black background i just want to show you um when you use the 3d pens you see how that's popping out i put that on there this morning it's actually dry but see how that pops out because that's just the way they dry so let me just put them onto a black background for you guys to see and you can see my little family of reindeers they're just so cute so I don't know which one you guys like the most. I like the fact that I've got kind of more dry brushing on this one. So I might come in and do more dry brushing and give this a little bit more contrast with the green. But I absolutely love both of them. And I think they're absolutely gorgeous. And that just shows you what you can do um, when you take something like a dollar store or whatever you will pound store product and you just go ahead and you play with it so there are my two reindeers i hope you really enjoyed them i really enjoyed making them i think they're such a fun project and um everybody have a wonderful day i won't see you now till the new year um so have a wonderful christmas stay safe take care of everybody and yourselves and um I hope Santa's going to be good to you this year. I'm trying to convince Dali that Santa needs to be good to me this year. Um, so I'll get lots of things. And I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm not on now till the new year. Dali will be on tomorrow. Um, and also that due to COVID, there's been so many delays with the new um, products coming out from Stamperia. And even getting products from Dali or Pentart, just with customs and everything, it, it's just been a nightmare, as has it been for many other stores. So I just wanted to let you know in the next two days, hopefully by the end of tomorrow, I'm going to have two boxes. I'm still missing one box that has a lot of Stamperia product in it. So I'll reach out to everybody who's done orders and just find out, you know, what you guys would like to do. You know if you want to refund or if you want me to wait till it all gets here or whether you want me to ship what i've got so i'll be in touch with you all but i do know two boxes are arriving or that's what they tell me 
So it seems to be a common problem that we're having here, uh, not just in Canada, but in the UK, everywhere around the world with um, what's going on. But anyway, um, I can deal with that in later, see what I get in my boxes first. But here you go. I hope you had a fun time. I hope you really enjoyed it. And thanks, everybody. Bye, James. And I'll talk to you guys in the new year. I'm sure you'll hear from me on Facebook anyway. <laughs> okay, everybody. Happy holidays.